Okay, so this is our second time playing this deck. The first time we played it, it went very swimmingly. I think this deck has a very decent matchup into traditional Jeskai control without the combo finish. And I think into Indomitable Creativity, if we can hold off their early creativity and eventually get up to Ugin, Ugin clears out Sarah's Emissary. So we have answers to them popping off after the fact. How do we ramp in our Blue Red Ramp deck? Well, we've got Chandra makes us extra mana. Mindstone ramps us up. Golos ramps us up. Uh, Discarding Magma Opus ramps us up. Uh, Surge Frez Kanta flipping technically ramps us up. And then we've got the ever cheeky cleansing wildfire here, which when paired with the indestructible cascading cataracts is a rampant growth that draws us a card because this getting you a land isn't contingent on destroying the land. It's just saying, hey, target a land. The controller of the lands you targeted gets to draw a card or gets to get a land and then you draw a card. So... We've got some miscasts and some Aether Gusts out of the sideboard for some interaction on the stack. So let's go ahead and dive on into some games with this one and uh, see how it goes. And again, if you haven't seen this deck before, this is one of the many decks you can find if you click the Historic Decks tab on my website. There's uh, like two dozen different decks up there. You can search by colors, archetype, power level, lots of different tools to find sweet things to play. In addition to deck lists, there are also videos of me playing most of the decks up there. So you can uh, get a feel for what the deck looks like in action before you decide if you want to invest your resources into it. Sand against Urian. Uh, this one is in the high potential category. The proven, proven category is reserved for things that have multiple tournament top finishes. You'll never, you'll never see a random brew that I think is good in the proven category. Let's go. The random brews that I think are potentially good end up in high potential. Zudo, thanks for the follow. The tapped artifact dual lands are not legal and historic. Otherwise, we would definitely be playing the blue red one. Those were those were not in historic horizons, unfortunately. Yeah, they'd be they'd be sweet. I'd play the I would have played, been playing the blue white ones of the tempered steel deck we played before this if they'd been legal. So these games are a slog because playing against control is always a slog. But I do think this deck has an okay control matchup. So I'll have to I have to fight through some endless cancels, but damn liberals and their cancel culture. Okay, so... I think we just attack with Crawly B this turn. Since they don't have Fatal Push-Up. Seven. Unraveler of Secrets.
So we have uh, eight mana now, so this Ugin is castable, which is nice. Cascading Cataracts, in addition to synergizing with Cleansing Wildfire, also lets us activate Golos if we get to untap with it here, so I assume they're going to kill this. Dead, Jim. You've killed him. Hopefully, Ugin doesn't have any. Ugin, Ugin seemed like the kind of guy that might have bad tweets from a decade ago that would get him canceled, but thankfully he slipped through here. Scryfall, Scryfall is great. Perlix, thanks for the follow. Hugin probably has bad takes right now. Yeah, big, big mood. Definitely, definitely the case. You don't gotta, you don't gotta look back a decade for Ugin's terrible takes. You know what's funny? My, my Twitter account would be in... Gosh, it's my Twitter account is 14 years old at this point. And believe it or not, when you're not a dumpster fire of a human, people can look at your tweets from a decade ago or a decade and a half, and there's nothing wrong with them. Well. Mind and body should move in you with thoughtfulness before action. Uh, I was, if you would believe it, more arrogant than I am now in my early 20s. But that's, that's about where the measure of these things were terrible. Terrible end. Oh, right. They get to memory us here. I mean, that's fine, though, right? Like, their hand is still full. <laughs> Welcome back, you 16. So they could Yori and blink their Narset if they wanted. And what, well, my Ascanta is not flipping anytime soon anyways, right? There's only four, four cards in here. This will be five. My mind needs a rest. I guess I could theoretically... I was going to say, I could theoretically flip this if I want to throw a Mind Stone away, but it's no longer an option. I think we just do this and then murder their Narset, right? Well, 
My body is ready for the game one Aether Ghost. Let's start at a sizzle and see if you make it to the inferno. I have reached my limit. Let's do this now in case we draw land. Them using Soul Shatter instead of attacking feels good for us. I think I want this to be a land. The focused and disciplined encounter no obstacles. Meditate. Yeah, all the older cards like Memory Lapse and Remand are replacement effects. They say counter a spell and then if you counter it, do this other thing instead of putting it into the graveyard. So it can't be, can't be countered as good against them. All right, we get to flip Azkian to here, which is uh, quite the bit of grind. So I have 10 mana. I think we Chandra draw a card to start. Yeah, if they interact with Chandra here, we can Crawling Barons kill their Narset, which is nice. And yeah, chat, both Chandra and Azkanta draw through Narset, so that's fine. These aren't, these aren't draw a card proper. I'm the best fire starter there is. This will be easy. I think we just pass. I don't think I want to run Crawling Barons into a removal spell. Well, we've mostly been on Blood Chief, Thirst, and Soul Shatters. Am I supposed to gamble this? I don't think so. I think I just want to activate Sir Trascan to this turn. Yeah. Thanks for the 22 months, JMOs. Welcome back. But I'm just playing like blue, black, grindy stuff here. Cash this in while their while their Narset is off. Yay, man. 
magic. That was nice of them to give me a card. I think I probably just pass here, right? Because I don't want to, like, find a Planeswalker, let them counterspell it, and then get it back with Eldest Reborn. Or, like, kill it and get it back with Eldritch Reborn. So I think we just pass here so the Eldritch Reborn could go away. Nailed it. What's going on, Wolf? Thanks for the thanks for the 14 months. Welcome back. Well, decline making this a creature. Just want to stack some counters on it with our mana here. Thanks for the thanks for the quarter of a year, lazy kid. Welcome back. So we're looking for a six mana Chandra at this point. So we can kill this Yorian before uh, before we die to it. We get uh, nine looks at it. Oh, Ugin's on top of our deck, so we get eight looks at it. We get Azkanta, draw step Azkanta. This is, uh, this is my win con by the game. Opponent's at eight minutes and 15 seconds here. We're at uh, 24 minutes.
This is this is the first game of this match. Uh, eight, 18 minutes, sorry. If you haven't heard of me, then get ready to meet my flames. Glad I can help with your not being on fire problem. Am I going to do a big spoiler video? Yeah, when the full spoiler is out, we'll do a set review. Now, nah, I think you're going to have a Shark Typhoon here and then we'll be dead. So the 52 months, Admain. Welcome back. Good morning, good morning. You see these activations here, chat? These are what we like to call clock equity in the biz. We even got him to cast a spell by making it a creature. Delicious. Okay, so extra Chandra. Some miscasts come in, Sweltering Suns comes out. Do I want Bone Crusher in this matchup? For his Mari command seems kind of bad. I guess I guess this is fine because it's like a must counter with Magma Opus. I might put in a couple of Bone Daddies just for getting stompy. Seems seems fine. Yeah, it's hard to know how much removal they're going to have in post-board, Martin. Like, they, they almost assuredly still have things like Soul Shatter in their deck. We saw those game one. The whole card image gallery should be up on Friday for Midnight Hunt. Sweet. We'll probably do do a card review on Monday then. Do card review Monday, deck building Tuesday, and then I'll probably take Wednesday off. It's likely likely the plan. Does anybody remember what spell we were casting? Negate! That doesn't fit with the meme I was trying to do. Read.
That's true. The negate does mean we have a chance to draw land. Garn has 15 and a half minutes on their clock. I have 23 minutes on my clock. Bird has used almost 10 more minutes off their clock than I have. I feel like when you hit a 10 minute differential in clocks between you and your opponent, your opponent's clock should start decreasing twice as quickly. There should be some kind of punishment for them taking an, exor an exorbitant amount of extra time compared to you. This finds cataracts, which means with cleansing wildfire. Sometimes they have to though. Very, very rarely do you have actual game action reasons why you're taking so long. You are right that there are exceptions to the I'm wasting your time, but generally speaking, it's people wasting time. The round timer in general is also just too long. Magic Arena automates things like shuffling that you don't have to do in paper, and the Magic Arena clocks are over 20% longer than paper clocks for a round timer. For reference, in Paper Magic, you have 50 minutes to play a match, and that includes sideboarding, shuffling, mulliganing, everything. 50 minutes start to finish for three games. In Magic Arena, a single match can take up to 64 minutes, 30 minutes off each player's timer, plus two two-minute sideboardings. So it's actually, it's actually more than 20% more, it's plus 14 minutes. We just crack them with crawling barons here. I could play the mind stone out, but like getting this higher is better against like an R set, for example. Moto Moto's at least closer to paper magic. Moto Moto doesn't have an auto tapper, and it's still only 25 minutes per player on the clocks. They give you three minutes during sideboarding, though. Hey, look, my opponent's roping again. In Paper Magic, is it advantageous to slow play? In Paper Magic, it's cheating to intentionally slow play. Use those three minutes to Google how to sideboard. God bless. I draw a card here in case we draw another two minute spell. Uh, this is our first match of this set. And we've been playing this set for almost 30 minutes. Our opponent's taken 18 minutes. We've taken nine. Geniuses. 
It's only impact spells, so we can plus here to kill her. I assume that Ugin's gonna get soul shattered or some such thing here, but we get to at least kill their thing first, so it's kind of a two for one. Is there a reason I schedule my Unite uploads while I'm live? Yeah, posting a ton of videos all at the same time is technically worse for content. So I like my Unite stuff to go up in the morning and then my um, magic stuff goes up in the evening after it's done, after the stream. Uh, I think it was fine, Ian. I don't know that I'd play more than two, but it was like good filler at finding our payoffs more consistently. Oh, I guess this means I lose the Magma Opus, huh? Just sad. Yeah, we're probably going to lose to our Odugan here, unfortunately. Maybe, maybe we can just race them, actually. Because this, this tap out is super aggressive. It's like I get to do this, and then I get to fire this up. Like this puts them to seven. It did not, Grindle. Welcome back. Sometimes you gotta refresh the page to send the notification through. So like, yeah, they're gonna get an Ugin here, but like, they're going to, uh, they're going to five and they've got two Chandra emblems. Yeah, they like have to answer my crawling barons and then they also have to beat me before they die. Ugin, Ugin's uh, ultimate does gain them life as worth noting. If we win this game, we definitely win the clock. Maybe? I don't know. I think the opponent's deck is capable of winning in 10 minutes if they if they play faster. Like, the opponent hasn't been burning clock because they have tough choices. He's been, like, wasting time in early spots. So we'll, we'll see. But yeah, they're under, they're under 10 minutes at this point. And I'm at, I'm over 20. Like, it's, it's been a long game, but it's been a long game where my opponents also played very slowly. Hey, thanks for 11 months, Doctor. Good morning, good morning. Will the set review also be a deck building stream? No, I'll probably do those on different days, Ranger. We'll probably do like set review Monday, deck building Tuesday. They'll be two different, like, two-hour segments. Yeah, them spending mana that doesn't impact the board is great for us. Yes, the 16th is rotation plus the new set. Are there creatures in graveyards? There are not. So, Brawl, unfortunately, Grindle, is on hold until Wizards fixes the matchmaking. It's been broken for two weeks now. Yeah, they should be dead here. I have two, two Chandra emblems here as well. Crawly B is the way to be. Crawling, crawling barons. Okie 
Duck. Okie dokie, Artichoke. Do I want all these Bone Crusher Giants? I might want all these Bone Crusher Giants, huh? Is this technically insulates me against um, Eldest Reborn too, right? And they have a couple of ways to get rid of my graveyard. I'm just gonna get rid of the Masteries and board in all the Bone Daddies. When in, when in doubt, I'll drain them out. When does Eldrain rotate out of Historic? Why does Giant insulate against Elders Reborn? Because Elders Reborn says you sacrifice a creature or Planeswalker, the first chapter, yeah. So if I have if I have a Giant in play, they can't make me sacrifice my Planeswalker if I don't want to. This is definitely a matchup where Miscast is a bit worse than something like Negate in our sideboard. This might be a spell still, so we'll just chill for the time being. I'm gonna cycle this Magma Opus so I can Chandra, or I'm gonna make a treasure with this so I can make a Chandra and then miscast a Counterspell next turn. Uh, Bone Crusher is a creature everywhere except when it's being cast on the stack as a stomp. Yeah, you are, you, for reference, you are welcome to talk about spoilers in chat still. I just won't really be giving opinions on them. Yeah, just for, for clarity's sake, you're always welcome to talk about magic related things here. Siege Walker, thanks for the raid. Hope you had a, hope you had a good stream today. Project Cadmus and Siege Walker, thanks for the follows. Snap, shut the fuck up. Give me, you can't say that and not give me a link. All right, I lied. Link, link that one. I don't believe you. I'm excited for the eventual linking of something that's definitely not Snapcaster Mage. Oh, people are saying that it's fake. Okay. I'd, I'd be very surprised if Snapcaster Mage was reprinted. Dragon, thanks for the 22 months. Welcome back. Maybe, maybe Snapcaster Mage and Historic would finally get memory lapse banned. Maybe. Uh, 
I'm a fight over my lady here. Oh, no, yeah, it's definitely not playable in actual historic. There are so many mists meditate and prepare. Maybe I'm just supposed to make Mana and Kestugan here. You're going down. Unfortunately, I don't get to draw a card with this, but it is what it is. It does at least ramp me. So, next turn, they get to play a land and play Yorian while holding up Memory Lapse, or probably dead. So the Narset down tick here implies that they're not about to memory me this turn. So we got that going for us. Yeah, the fact that Chandra doesn't hit Planeswalkers anymore is just like huge said. We're definitely behind this game. Our out here is unsarcastically the clock now. So the follow maze magic. I'm glad we plus the Chandra first, so we weren't forced to choose between plusing or getting rid of our Inferno. I mean, opponent has two minutes and forty seconds to figure out how to get us to zero, so they're kind of they're kind of taking their sweet time about it. Their clock, you can see it vaguely behind the chat there. They're, they're under two and a half minutes now. And they aren't playing with any sense of urgency here, so. Nobody tells me what to do. The fact that they just attacked that would seem to imply that they're not about to soul shatter her. Playing to the clock, are we the bad guys? No, my opponent that's used 16 more minutes than I have off the clock is the person that's bad here. Everybody. Yeah, I, it, it, the way they're playing, it feels like they're not even aware. It feels like they're not even aware that the clock is there. This is our first match with this deck, yes. Well, that's a good question. I don't know. I don't know what the clock looks like on mobile. Oh, looks like someone's getting a little sweaty. The thoughtfulness before action. I definitely punted by playing this matchup from a content perspective. It looks the same on mobile. Yeah, I'd be surprised maybe it was too different. Yeah, like even here, right? Like they're just like taking 10 seconds to figure out their Narset down tick. Thanks for the follow dissolve. Yeah, yeah, I, I mean, and honestly, like, because we got a Chandra, Chandra emblem down, we're actually kind of winning the game on the not clock aspect too, right? 
Do the intro again and cut this match from YouTube? No. People, people can fast forward past it. Only a few more. I am pretty far off outer space money. See you 11 months, assassin. Welcome back. I think I can count on one hand the number of times I've had an opponent lose to clock on Magic Arena. It's pretty rare because Magic Arena gives you way too much time on your clock. This is gonna hurt. I don't know if there is anything good about it, but we won. The Magic Arena clock should be half of what it currently is. I think half is a little aggressive. I think the Magic Arena clock should realistically be 20 minutes. 20, 25 at the absolute most. At a, at a minimum, the Magic Arena clock should be 25 minutes, which is the same as Magic Online. I think because we have an auto tapper in Magic Arena, 20 minutes should be sufficient. But, yeah. Thanks for the gift, the sub gift says. I, here's, here, here's the take, chat. I think the clock should be 25 minutes per player, but I think your sideboarding time should come out of your gameplay time. There's, there's a big brain take. And I think once you click submit and you're at the waiting screen, it stops ticking down your sideboard time, but that's, that's what I'd like, I think. Cleansing Wildfire is a ramp spell, that's why we're playing it. Hey, Zace, oh, thanks yeah. for the sub gifty. One more to make it 10. I appreciate it. All right, so Chandra's a distraction. I think I'm gonna make mana and bin magma opus. I could just kill a creature. I think I'm just going to discard the Magma Opus. Well, yeah, I mean, Chandra's going to die, so Ugin's not castable. Yeah, yeah, this deck would play four of the blue-red artifact lane in a heartbeat. Not, not close. I assume there's going to be a company untap kill us here. I don't know that I want to Aether Gust in this matchup. Seems like it's probably a little slow. I think we cut Mind Stone. Yeah, I don't really want to spend time ramping early. I want the other Awakened Inferno. It's a Pseudo Sweeper once we go a little bit long. Sounds good, Wargy. Do you have a updated list you'd like to see or do you want me to just put something together? Appreciate the support. Well, you, you need, 
You need a minimum amount to top end or your deck's just not gonna do anything. Like we need we need card advantage at the top to actually go over them. Like a trickster here. Hey, simply thanks for the follow. This is my full time gig these days. I wouldn't be here without folks like you, so thanks for keeping me around. I have another trickster. Let's see if I live to regret this one. Could just have a counter spell. Dispute coming in against us makes me think I probably want to cut. Yeah, I probably just can't beat Sea and Sky, huh? Morning, Margira. This card draws some cards every turn. Probably not going to be a game three here to think about. Uh, full set spoiler for Innistrad goes up on Friday at some point. The spoiler seasons have been shorter and it's great. They've been doing them, doing them in like two weeks, which is much preferred to them dragging out over the course of a month. How is Blue White Steel? We didn't play against a single Jeskai Triumph, so it was a great set. Deck was deck was very good at beating other people's bad brews. Our our deck was king of the bad brews. What makes a card a lord? A lord is magic jargon for a creature that gives all creatures of a particular type plus one plus one. So, uh, Miro Regery, Master of the Pearl Trident, those are those are lords in the Merfolk deck. Yeah, I think Lord of Atlantis is the or or origination of that. Oh no. Oh no. Was that a fluke or the pair or the cube broken? Please be a fluke. I wanted to play like another, another 45 minutes of magic. All right, we got one. Yeah, if it goes more than a minute, you usually want to cancel it and re re kick it. Weltering Sun's an opener, turn one land war elves. You love to see it, Chip. Opponent rocking some Shamalamans, it looks like.
Yeah, sounds good work. You will do. Is there a particular day you'd like to see it played or is tomorrow morning good? Let me, let me know. They binned double Rage Forger. Thought Distortion is an annoying card. Lukewarm take. If your deck doesn't want to play against Thought Distortion, most people don't want to play against you. Got some choices on their collected company. Or they've pitched their laptop out the window because they're putting the bottom cards in the bottom of their deck. Yeah, yeah, I can do it the second deck tomorrow for sure. How many times do I gotta teach you this lesson, old man? Are we having fun yet? It's a little, it's a little hot in here, chat. One could argue sweltering even. Is that a shaman? It is a shaman. Look at that. The more you know. Oh yeah, three mana Tefri with memory lapse sounds nasty. Can you imagine instant speed memory lapse? Gross. Oh, Gurm Gully makes these bigger too. It does, doesn't it? Nah, we're gonna cast my favorite kind of Ugin next turn, chat. A concession Ugin. Come on, cast your spells. What's going on, OB? Thanks for the two thirds of a year. Welcome back. Shaman deck came out of nowhere. If you mean by if by came out of nowhere, you mean was explicitly pushed in the pile of cards they just added to the format, then yes, it came out of nowhere. Exile our search for his Kanta. Unlucky. Not sure how we'll ever recover from this. I will it didn't exist a couple of weeks ago. Yes. Jumpstart Historic Horizons didn't exist a couple of weeks ago.
Let's get it chill. Let's see who can just get ultimate eventually here. No reason to expose myself to hasty dorks. Yeah, I'd actually be very surprised if Caleb Durward wasn't instrumental in getting Shamans introduced to this format. I'd, I'd wager they did that expressly because of his his tinkering in modern with it. It felt it felt like they included a lot of cards in Historic Horizons that were like these cards are just like a little bit too weak for actual factual modern. The power level's a little bit lower here, so they want to give him a chance. What do you think of this? I think I like it. Just minimal ramp, just like kill your stuff and then have some top end here. Beef easy. Does beef easy have the implication of there being a beef hard? Are there different difficulty settings for beef? As something of a vegetarian myself, I'm not familiar with beef difficulties. Beef nightmare, you casual. Thanks for the sub beef. Welcome to the channel this morning. I'm just gonna go ahead and clean out the board here. I have a Breeds and Chandra's here to pick up after the fact. We got a Mastery to flash it back. Oh no, chat! Yikes! Oh no! Oh no! Chat, my deck is playing 26 lands. Where are my lands? I I'm gonna kill this. Thank goodness, he says before getting collected company. <clears throat> All right, if we had an anger, a sweltering suns, or an untapped land next turn, we're still in the game. If we don't draw one of those things, it's like half our deck to be fair. Oh no. Well fam, it was a good run. It was a good run, fam. Rip, rip us, huh? Yikes. All right, I'm gonna leave Mindstone in over Wildfire because Wildfire is not always ram. Rune Blaster is a shaman. So if they have Prodigy in play, it gets two of your lands. Which is terrifying. It's very scary, chat. Very scary. Okay, I'm a one for one this because I'm terrified of getting double stone rained. Mercy. Mercy, don't don't double blast me. 
The Shaman's deck is great, by the way. If you haven't seen it, there's a video up on my YouTube channel. San has played a bit of it. A lot of, lot of people have, uh, have tinkered around with it. It's very reasonable. We just chill for the time being. A good blender. My wife and I got a ninja blender when we got married a decade ago and it's still going strong. It's a wonderful, a wonderful tool. I'm gonna stomp Chandra and then play play Bone Daddy here. They're blasting, chat. They're blasting. I think we're probably dead to this planeswalker. Your deck doesn't seem very good. Really, really struggled into these creature decks. This will be easy. I mean, the opponent's deck isn't even just trying to meme. Like, it's a genuinely good aggressive deck. Again, the good decks in this format tend to be polarized at an extreme, right? You want to be incredibly controlling or you want to be incredibly aggressive. And the opponent's deck is definitely incredibly aggressive. Very, very reasonable archetype if you're looking to get people. Yep, LD Pig. All right, let's give this one one more shake. But I think I'm probably gonna probably gonna demote this one on the website. It's uh, it's felt real mediocre today. Felt felt okay last time we played it, and the time before that. But these cre creature decks have gotten more linear and aggressive with this this set for sure, and it definitely doesn't feel like we have good tools here. Yeah, it's, it's been a long time, Martian. I should buy the expanded capacity for Psypops and Dream Fluffs. Sure. Probably not going to spend the currency on anything else. Okie doke. I'm 
Nah, I think you just end up being worse than other aggressive strategies with something like that, Violet. The prow prowess cards don't need more help, essentially. So they've got two card types in their bin. This will add a third. If they have any kind of instant, it'll be a fourth. You wanna play with fire, huh? Just kill their threat here. I wouldn't be surprised to see unholy heat or something. Off our Chandra here, maybe another stomp, but you know, we have Awakened Inferno guaranteed next turn, or we can even discard Opus plus Mastery it. We'll probably just save the Mastery to play organically, though. The old pay for life draw card. You love to see it. I bet they're a Death Shadow deck. Well, now we'll do that. Huh, maybe I was supposed to overload this. Would it let me cat with the mana off of Chandra? This puts them low enough that our two Chandra should kill them pretty quickly, even if they kill our 4-4 four -four here. It also draws us some cards. They are one card in their graveyard off of escaping Croxa, but we could see like uh, some kind of spell get cast here to add that. I think Dovin's Veto was a, the introduction of Dovin's Veto was a marked change in control design philosophy with fire design that made control kind of change who it appeals to. In, in my opinion, fire design really kind of removed the things that I enjoyed about control decks in, in, in Magic as a game. Do I want less sweepers, more spot removal here? Maybe I want less ramp actually. Especially if they're gonna be like K commanding me potentially. I'm gonna bring in the Abrades. I'm gonna bring in the Bone Crusher Giants. I'll bring in Ann Anger as a fifth sweeper. Maybe these are fine. These kill a lot of their stuff, right? And they have Bone Crusher that will cer certainly have Arcanus that I need to kill. CG Silvestro, thanks for the three quarters of a year. I think mid-range has a really good shot in, in upcoming standard. In current standard 22, it feels like you can build mid-range to beat control or beat aggro. And once you have a sideboard, you can hopefully do both reasonably. Can you expand on the bit about Vito? Traditionally speaking, before a card like Vito was commonplace, control mirrors largely came down to posturing 
where players would build up to one big turn and then there'd be this really interesting back and forth about resolving a key threat or not letting it resolve and Vito just being like, nah, that threat doesn't resolve, bro. It's just like really uninteresting and dry and removed a fundamental aspect of the gameplay. Having, having a hard no button like that also meant that bad control players could make sequencing decisions and not get punished for it because they just had to hold up two mana. Means that if you tap out for something silly, there's no punish. You're just like, all right, I still have Vito up, so it's no big deal. I think I just want a blocker here rather than ramping this turn. Yeah, but like, so... I actually think from the perspective of what did this do to our games of magic, um, Teffrey's really offensive when it was in play, but at least it offered counterplay on the stack, right? Yeah, the old the old twin mirrors during Modern's Peak where you got to like remand the stuff that they were countering. Like they'd counter your spell and you'd remand their counter. It's just like or remand your spell that they were countering. Just like very delicious. Okay, so that means I can Ugin next turn, right? Oh please behave yourselves. Behave yourselves. I'm going to get greedy here and try and cast both of these. Well, they didn't have a removal for Golos end of turn, so that's nice. Let's make smart decisions, shall we? Friends, we'll leave up Golos so Den of the Bugbear doesn't hickle this. Oh no, chat! Not Croxa! How, how will I ever win the game now, chat? Oh, no. Not all this value from Croxa. So I could have Magma Opus there, but that's way less fun than I'm rolling. Listen, chat, every time you beat up an unplayable mid-range deck, an angel gets its wings, okay? Our deck's not very good, but it's not mid-range deck bad. At the very least, it's not a mid-range deck. 
You thought we liked playing mid-range decks? I love playing mid-range decks. That's why I also, that's why I also realistically understand that they're bad though. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, this one, this one felt not great overall. Um, we beat a control deck, which is kind of what we were expecting to do, but man, the aggressive decks just have so many ways to play through your sweepers these days. Just like, just, it, there's a reason why Just Guy Control with Lightning Helix is the top dog in Wrath of God. Just, just having these deal three sweepers did not feel like it was adequate enough. So this deck's very good against mid-range decks. It's decent into control. It's middling against aggro. Um, so I mean, it's fine in the format from a positional perspective. You're gonna have some matchups that you punt a little bit, but it does still have some play. Sometimes you're gonna have your sweepers line up okay and it'll be fine. It does have a very cute angle with cleansing wildfire into cascading cataracts, that's for sure. Uh, at any rate, that's going to go ahead and wrap on my magic stuff for today. I'm taking a little bit easier on magic content between now and when uh, rotation happens. Next week, just doing a couple of decks every single morning. We're going to be continuing our Psychonauts 2 playthrough up next. Remember, if you're looking for more magic content,